Hi guys, um, further BX diary from uh, today. So, um, a thing I mentioned earlier was rechecking the uh, tracking. Uh, yeah, haven't done that. <laughs> uh, my mind instead went to um, right now. We, um, now the car's in a position where I'd like to drive it long distance and be happy to do so. Um, I decided to uh, swap the radio over for the Mark 25 because that's more important apparently. <laughs> um, now the one dilemma is. Um, well, the nice thing was, um, this car had it still had its original radio, so it still had an old sharp cassette player, which frankly works blooming well to be fair. Um, however, um, in the 21st century, it's becoming all the more blooming difficult to be able to um, live like it's the 80s. It's becoming harder and harder because, um, well, just the way of life really, you just end up having to fit these slightly newer additions to an old car to make it sort of practical, if you like. Um, now, you obviously you can go quite a long way with that idea, like putting all sensors and stuff that modern cars have, but that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about practical, he's like, um, everyone has a phone, um, you wouldn't even find a phone box around anymore, so therefore, on a long distance drive, um, I generally have a radio in the car that can have Bluetooth connectivity, which then means I can operate the, f use the phone, the phone call part of your phone, through the radio, it's therefore when it's hands free and therefore it's perfectly legal to do so. Um, so the Mark II 5 has always been my distance car and that's what I've generally used. Um, but obviously now wanting to put the BX into that Ooh. position instead, um, need to put that radio in. Um, now it's tricky because on this car, the sharp radio, you turned, is two knobs, one that um, basically just turned to tune it, the other one was on and in volume. Um, and it was on permanent feeds I discovered. So when you turn the car off and the engine was off, all the electrics were off, the radio still had feed. Um, so obviously straight away I knew that, okay, we need to try and find an ignition source from somewhere. Now, my original thought on this was, right, well, go for the cigarette lighter. That's logical. You'd make it so the cigarette lighter would normally just come on on either auxiliary or when the ignition itself is turned on, which therefore means that when you're using the cigarette lighter, you're not gonna, um, end up draining the battery because you're not going to leave the cigarette lighter on unless the engine's actually running. That's logically, that, that is how a 5 works, that's how they wind up on the Renaults. However, on this car it turns out, uh, turn the camera around. So on this car, um, I've had that out, that, the clock needs a backlight anywhere, I've got the bulb down there on the floor so I can sort that out. Also got to do the same thing with the clock so that's another job for another day though. Um, but it turns out, actually, it would appear from what I can work out in the Haynes manual um, and based on what I've learned today um, that what you have on a BX is, uh, though oddly the yellow one is actually your, your um, Earth, which obviously, normally speaking, or on the Renaults, um, um, yellow on the Renault is live. In this occasion, um, that is Earth, and then that one there is your live feed, because that's logical. <laughs> so yeah, that's backwards in some ways. Um, but anyway, getting back to what I was talking about. So I thought, well, if that there is live feed, then I go up to cigarette lighter because that's going to be on the ignition feed. Hey presto. Only to strip that back, solder a wire on the back of the live on that, and then discover that actually. Um, and I thought I'd actually check this, but I turned out I managed to miss, make it, mess it up and hadn't. Actually, the radio itself is wired off the same feed the cigarette lighter uses. So guess what? The cigarette lighter is also a main feed. So consequently, um, that was a bit of a trashed idea. And I thought, okay, is there anything else locally that I can use? Obviously, that is an ashtray, but the cigarette lighter is there, so it's not that. Not sure where that gets its feed from, but also not sure how to get it out and don't fancy breaking it just yet. So we'll fix that bit. Um, so I thought, okay, the next closest easy thing I can really get at is this stalk here, which does indicate as lights and horn. Turned out that the only feed I could find on that um, that comes out is when anything on here is actually operated. So that was a bit of a bummer, to be honest. Um, found the direct feed going into it, but yeah, no nothing would work unless it was basically the stalk taking the power from the, that main feed and then sending out either to indicators left or right 
dip beam, high beam, or the horn. So you had the one inlet and then the five outlets, and that was it. So that was a bit of a failed idea again. Um, and then we go over to, um, I was going to try, okay, is there anything on the window stalk? And the problem with that one is, from what I can figure out, the wire plugs in somewhere up here. And I wasn't sure on how to get at it without breaking something. So I thought, no, stuff that will leave it. So the next logical thing was, OK, let's go for a feed near the fuse box. Now, this is an interesting one because it kind of dangles, if that makes sense. And you kind of push it up like that and it plugs itself up like that. So I thought, OK, how hard can that be? Went through all these relays thinking, OK, well, maybe we'll just take when we turn the ignition, we'll put our finger over it, work out which one's clicking and then we'll splice into the feed that's making that click because that it means a signal from the ignition switch is saying that yep yeah, that's that circuit we switched that circuit on so tried that nope could not work out for life me which blue one was clicking when i did it so ended up taking it all of them out yeah let's not go there um then went through okay which blooming plug can we use out of all this lot here as you can see i did eventually find one that is off normally and then on when you put on um the ignition so we have finally got there but yeah that was an interesting one just goes to show you the different ways that different manufacturers did things obviously today um generally speaking you often end up with say one platform you often end up with one platform that say three different brands essentially have put cost into developing but then actually um they're all they're all pretty much identical besides the badges because basically all the manufacturers say right let's all invest into one platform with all the same idea which then means when it goes into a garage it's easier to repair so whereas today a lot of things are more or less identical everything's pretty conventional aside from sort of the more obscure brands um pre is tvr still around because tvr used to be a typical one for that where everything was just completely bonkers and yeah just don't expect anything to be at all normal or ordinary um but yeah that's yeah so i've gone from renault where they, they do something one way to a situation where it's done almost a completely different way although not massively different but enough to throw you yeah it's been fun so now i believe if i now turn the camera around and find the key which could be ideal if i want to actually try and demonstrate it pop that round there we go <laughs> is going as well as it could as of course uh, where's the ignition switch gone somewhere over here there there we go so now you might hear a click if you're very lucky indeed you might hear a click let's see so now do that hear a click that's that's with right so now you might be able to see the clock can you see the clock uh, just there we go, just about there. So now that is on auxiliary, and that's off. So now we've got it on auxiliary, and it fires itself up like that, and it stays on the whole time. There you go. So now we've made it so that we've got a, a radio that comes on with auxiliary circuit, and then basically, obviously, depending on how much circuits go on and off it will probably you're probably basically better off to just wait until it's the car's either entirely turned on or just only use it on the auxiliary circuit but either way we have now got the radio working on the on the key on a turn on and off circuit like it needs to be with a direct feed which is i believe that one there which basically helps hold its memory um yeah so we've got the eventually, so now we need to go through, remember which wires here equate to what there, because obviously we've only got two speakers. I would like to put more in this car, but um, I'm yet to actually know where the hell they would actually go. So once I know where they go, I can then, I've got those speaker wires spare in the garage, so I can soon route some extra wires in and make that work. But for now, just be nice to have my stereo in here so everything works as it would have done before. So yeah um i will keep all the old radio because let's face it how many blooming cars from nearly 40 years ago are you like to find now that have been owned driven a fair old bit owned by a few different people and still have the original radio present with them today quite unlikely so yeah 
So yeah, that's um, that's me. That's today's progress of um, aiming to do the tracking, not touching it at all, and fitting a radio instead. Welcome to Shield Hammer Engineering. <laughs> See you next time.